Hello, we are here uh, at the Pediatric Allergy and Asthma Meeting in London with Dr. Clive Gratham from a, a Guy's Hospital, who is the lead, lead clinician and a consultant dermatologist in the Urticaria Clinic uh, in, at Guy's Hospital. We are commenting his article on the new targets uh, of chronic urticaria, looking forward to new therapies. And uh, we would like to talk about this new article that was recently published in the Clinical and Translational Allergy Journal. Dr. Gratham. Thank you very much for this invitation. It's a great pleasure to talk to you. And also to have a chance to discuss the article that's been published this year concerning new treatments for chronic spontaneous urticaria. And I must acknowledge my co-authors, Dr. Emek Kosaturk, Professor Mara, and Professor Metz, who all contributed to this important new article. Thank you very much. In your article, you mentioned new therapies that focus on anti-IgE treatment. We have already known about omalizumab for some time, but there are other therapies that were mentioned in your article. Would you like to comment a little bit more about that? Omalizumab has been a game changer for the management of patients with difficult chronic spontaneous urticaria who do not respond to H1 antihistamines. But it is nice to know that there are new products in development, and Ligilizumab is one of those. It is an anti-IgE that uh, has similar properties to omalizumab, but some different pharmacodynamic effects which suggest that it may be even better. You also mentioned, very importantly, some new pathways that are being targeted in therapies. For example, the mast cell, as we know, is very important in chronic spontaneous urticaria, and the prostaglandin D2 is one of the new targets for this therapy. Would you like to comment on those? The uh, prostaglandin D2 is produced from mast cells and binds receptors on eosinophils, basophils, endothelial cells, all of which are involved in chronic spontaneous urticaria wheels. So, in theory, it should work. It should be helpful. Now, there is one product, uh, which is AZD1981, that is being trialed as, as a uh, oral treatment for chronic spontaneous urticaria. I don't know the outcome of the trial, but it is very encouraging that companies are developing new drugs for this difficult to treat condition. As a clinician yourself, patients often ask for topical treatments on their urticaria. There are some, right now, only systemic options are available. Would you like to talk about a little bit more about these new topical possibilities? Furthermore, there is a topical cream that is being developed by GSK that may be effective and safe, but of course this is the whole purpose of clinical studies. The trial that is underway is a phase one study, so very early development, and this product will not be available in the clinic just yet. Having said that, it's of great theoretical interest that in addition to our well-recognized systemic treatments, that we may be able to use skin treatments for localized urticaria. And uh, one can think of examples, such as pressure-aggravated chronic spontaneous urticaria, maybe cold urticaria, affecting specific areas of the body. So again, it is very good to know that new products are being developed for what is otherwise a very difficult condition to treat. Thank you very much, Dr. Gratham. Uh, Gratham and I would like to uh, say to you that you should read this article, Looking Forward to New Therapies in Chronic Spontaneous Urticaria, that has been published in the Chronicle and Translational Allergy Journal, which is uh, the latest addition to the Aki journal family and an open access journal, which is very important and appealing to us all. Thank you, Dr. Gratham. Thank you very much.